Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. Pose, season two, episode seven, Blow, coming up next. scene we see Damien he's still teaching the classes at the YMCA the Vogue classes and as we can tell there's only about three people in there as compared to earlier in the season it was packed I mean people could barely get into the room and he sees an employee from the YMCA and they hand him an envelope with his check and it is dwindling he said hey this is just enough for bus fare she tells him look Vogue is kind of dwindling out now. People are tired of voguing. There probably won't be any more people in your class. And just understand this, dear, okay? It was like a trend. It was a fad. Once people are over it, especially white people, they are not interested anymore. Take what you can get. Sorry, roll with the punches. Good luck, kid. So the next scene takes us to the ballroom. And of course, Pray Tell is doing his thing. He's hosting, everybody's having a good time. And the category for that evening was realness. Everybody was serving, enjoying, having a good time. Although he looks closer to the back and he sees that it's a few people not having fun, specifically Ricky and a few of the other children in the ballroom. They look kind of down, the energy's down. And he says, you know what, cut the music, cut it. I see that some of y'all are down, Vogue is dwindling, it's not as popular, and I hate to say it, but I told you so. I saw it when I was your age with the disco, and I told you that, hey, this is not the breaking moment where our community will be accepted, okay? And when Vogue came out, I kind of told you the same thing. This is not this one song that's going to br bridge us together with everybody else. So. I kind of told you so, but in the meantime, let's just continue to have fun and live. Just just, just listen to me. We'll have other opportunities. Let's just have fun, and I need y'all to get out of y'all's little funk, and we having a good time. So lighten up. So moving on to the next scene, we see Blanca and Pray Tell. They're at her house talking, shooting the breeze, catching each other up on what's new or what's going on. So Blanca tells Pray Tell, can you believe that Frederica, keep in mind Frederica is the real estate mogul, went on the news and told everybody that we keep an unclean nail salon and there were used syringes and condoms all left all in the front of the salon and it was dirty. And I, that's bad because everybody's going to think Think, especially with this HIV and AIDS pandemic that's happening and we don't know that much about it how dare she put that on the news that's gonna make people even more scared or even more terrified of our community and pray tell says you know what she's evil but she's smart <laughs> she is playing the cards right she knows exactly what to say and uh, Dang, she kind of she kind of doing a the thing there, and I, I can't even front on that. She for drink is a smart heifer, okay? So Blanca tells Pray Tell, like, okay, that's that's not it. Lulu, I'm hearing bad things about Lulu, and I heard that she's doing some bad things. And I went to the strip club and she was looking a hot mess. I mean, she says that it's from an inhaler and it's making her dehydrated, but I've been hearing that she's on drugs. So I went and talked to her, and I don't think that's it. We gotta we gotta get on up and up. Something's not right. And Pray Tell says, well, well, do you believe her that she's just dehydrated? She's like, well, I don't know, because she's been looking kind of bad, and I've just been hearing it a little too much. Not only that. That, Ricky and Damien they're sad and they're in the dumps because not only is Ricky not on tour anymore even having any more auditions to go on tour but Damien's classes are ending and they just kind of laying around not doing anything and you know what pray tell say you know what we got to stop that at one point we had elders kind of stepping in and telling us what to do but now these children are getting out of control we got to help them so Blanca says well <laughs> You calling yourself an elder? I, you're the last person I thought could call yourself an elder. And so Pray Tell says, okay, well, how about this? How about I call myself an elder and I step up and we step up and we get these children back on point because they slipping and they falling and we got to make sure they stay up. Later on in the week, Pray Tell and Blanca get Lulu, Damien, and Ricky all in one room and they say, hey, look. We see that y'all are down in the dumps. Y'all acting like y'all don't have anything to do. So to keep y'all busy, how about this? We want y'all to do a little homework assignment for us. We want y'all to cover Frederica's house 
in a condom because we want to make a political statement and we want everybody to know that not only is she homophobic but she's putting out these lies about the community and about this disease and we got to show that safe sex is the best sex so we got to do this so lulu and damien and ricky they're like okay that's a wonderful idea but how the heck are we gonna do it and pray tell and blanca said well you have plenty of time you figure that out that's gonna keep you busy how about you do that so later on, we see those three. They're in a room and they're thinking, well, how the hell can we do this? I mean, it's one thing that this is a good idea, but we don't even have the money. So they're thinking, should we buy a whole bunch of condoms and glue them together? Can we, do we make a sign? I mean, I don't know what we do. So at that point, Lulu, she begins to cry. And they're looking at her like, you know, why are you crying? What's wrong? And she says like, you know what? I can't believe my life right now. At one point in time, I was in school. I was taking accounting classes. I was doing so much with my life. And now look at me, I'm a stripper and my life is down in the dumps. This is not me, it's terrible. So Ricky and Damien, they tell her, you know, just calm down, it's okay. We've all had terrible times in our life. Don't beat yourself up. And at that time she has an epiphany and says, you know what? There is a company that makes kind of like those bouncy houses or blow up little uh, displays that people use at birthday parties. How about we hire that company to make one in the shape of a condom and we just get an estimate on that and run with it. In the meantime, we got to think about where we're going to get the money. And they all think that's a wonderful idea. And they're excited that they thought of something. Now they got the ball rolling. Angel and Poppy, they're still maintaining and kind of being themselves. And <laughs> Angel tells Poppy, like, look, I'm waiting on this call because I might have, have an opportunity to rub, el rub elbows with some heavy hitters and be in the scene of the fashion world. So I just, I'm so excited about that. And it's on the pretty side of town and people spend really big money money and of course poppy says hey i'm really happy for you hopefully that works out that's all good the phone rings she gets a call and good news that she is the new bb girl this is a great moment this is a pivotal turning point they're both happy and she said you know what i'm gonna go to this event i've got invited to this party but only if you accompany me as my boyfriend so finally we see an opportunity for poppy and angel to be together and Angel's not hiding it or there's not a missed opportunity where she's consumed with something else. So this is the first time they're going in public together. So this is the next big step in their relationship. Still on our homework assignment, Lulu, of course, goes to Miss Electra, okay, mother, and says, you know, we got this assignment. We really want to do this. She explains the homework assignment for Frederica, and she tells her, hey, we need a donation. And, of course, Electra's not having it, and she's like, I don't give money away. I don't give to charity. Um, why are you coming to me with this? And, of course, Lulu has to think quick on her feet, and she says, you know what? If you make this donation and help us, you will be known amongst the children. You will be known in the community community that you made this big step and you made it happen like think about this you could be nominated for mother of the year and this could put your name back in positive light despite all of the other stuff that's been going on and Electra gives it thought and she says you know what she pulls money out of her sleeve and she says here's a thousand <laughs> Because you know she wasn't going to give that whole amount or whatever she was asking. Because Lulu gives her an estimate of 2500 That's what the company gave her. Gave her. And Electra said, well, here's $1,000. i am going to teach you how to get that, uh, that other money, boo. Because I'm not going to give you all of it. And, of course, the next scene, we see Lulu and uh, Electra. They are at, of course, their s and uh, place of work where they are going to charge double and put those men into strife and make that money. Angel and Poppy, they go to this high-scale party where everybody's super posh and having a good time. And you could tell everybody in their room got a little bit of coin. So they walk in and they see people at this table. And just openly, this guy just sniffs some lines of cocaine. And Angel's just like, Poppy, they just they just sniffing cocaine in front of everybody. They not even going to try to hide it. Mm, I've heard some things currently now in, in entertainment that people still do that to this day. But Poppy's like, well, yeah, I guess so. I guess they don't mind. I guess they don't mind sniffing it and the guy says you know what you need to try a couple of lines of this here take a take a take a sniff and of course poppy's trying to guide you know angel to the bathroom like oh we gotta go we gotta go and you see angel she's so desperate and she's so determined to fit in that she says well maybe we'll try something poppy pulls her away they go into the hallway and <sighs> what i thought was so messed up 
Angel tells Poppy, well, she takes advantage of his slowness and says, well, it's pharmaceuticals, which means it comes from a doctor, so it can't be too bad. And of course, Poppy gives in and says, well, I guess you're right, okay, because he trusts her. And they go, and unfortunately, they go back to the table and they sniff some lines. And immediately, I said, oh, that's why this episode is called Blow. Wow, pivotal point super foreshadowing so they get you know once you get that sniff i can already tell mm, they locked and loaded they addicted so they already own it so pretty much all of our core characters <laughs> damien pray tell blanca i mean everybody you can think of they go to the hotel because they want to get closer to the area where frederica lives so they can prepare and prep the next day to cover the house and this big blow up toy that they, they've finally gotten so they get to the hotel and we have pray tell damien and ricky they all stay in the room and pray tell says well this bed is mine this other bed y'all can sleep together in that bed and ricky says yeah you know come on damien sleep in the bed with me he says uh i'm gonna go get another bed uh i'm not gonna sleep with you cheater and he proceeds to go get another bed in the meantime pray tell and ricky are left in the room and pray tell opens up this overnight bag and it has creams and lotions and all kind of stuff he's getting down and ricky is like is that all yours is that what you do he said look i'm older this is my nightly routine it keeps me sane and it keeps me happy so you start to see ricky start to take an interest in pray tell and with that interest that he has with pray tell i'm like oh this is kind of dangerous ricky is seeing him as this fatherly influence mistaking that for attraction maybe i don't know but you see the attraction developing and already as the viewer you're like oh where is this going where is this going so we finally get to the day when everybody's locked and loaded they come in the van and they go to Frederica's house they have everything that they need and nurse judy she calls the local news so there's a van outside that's willing to film and ready to film them putting up what they need to put up and blanca's like hey do we want them there she's like yes we want them to catch capture what we're doing and and why we're doing it and of course miss miss electra honey she's just like it's hot i don't need to stand out here why am i here and pray tells like if you don't get your sadiddy butt out here and help us and she's like i'm in my heels i'm in my heels so they're like girl just come on just help us so as they're getting ready to do their thing and they're setting up this lady and this neighbor with rollers and a and and she has a robe on and walking her little dog is coming she's kind of looking you know all suspicious seeing them set up and blanca's like oh we got somebody that's gonna call the cops we need somebody to stall what what are we gonna do and electra says let me do this honey i got this <laughs> so she goes down and she talks to the lady and she says well hi hello you know and the lady's like well, what's going on what's happening to her house she says um well you know she has termites so we're helping her set up and we're putting a tent and we're making sure that everything okay and the lady's not believing it she says uh, you know pretty much i don't believe you so she says um well i met her at such and such restaurant and you know she said that she just adores you and she said okay now look i know you're lying because i don't like her and, and and she sure don't like me but i'm still gonna call the cops so electra then proceeds to read and says well call the cops you know it's a shame you coming out here looking at that with the rollers and the robe and walking that dog this is not the yellow brick <laughs> brick roll like be gone get out of here their project was a success. Everybody goes home and Damien walks in on Angel and Poppy in the room. And as they're rustling, putting on their clothes, he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bust in. And he sees them drop a cocaine vial. So he says, whoa. I'm not stupid, what's going on? And Poppy's like, hey, hey, you saw what happened when I got caught with some weed and I was dealing. Do not tell mother that I I'm doing cocaine with Angel because we will be out of here. Don't do it. And so Damien says, you know, well, that's not cheap. How are y'all affording this? And Angel tells him that, hey, this was free and we got it for free. And Damien is like, basically, y'all are just boo-boo the food, dumb and dumber. Don't you know that the first one is free and y'all are going to go back? And I feel sorry for y'all. I'm just letting you know right now. If it gets out of hand, I'm saying something, but y'all need to get it together. Angel's like, well, I got the, I'm a BB girl now. And she's just so blind as to what she has gotten herself into. 
a little bit of silver lining. Blanca's shop is open. She has her client back in there and they're talking. And she says, look, I can't believe you got your shop back open. How did you do it? I can't believe it. And she said, hey, I won my case. I took my classes. We won. We had proof that it was discrimination. We are open for business. And the lady's like, look, you be the white lady in court. I can't believe it. Let me get out of here. Thank you for your services. I'm happy that your shop is open. Blanca's putting her items back on the counter and in typical Stephen King fashion, and she turns around and Miss Frederica is at that seat like, well, hello, <laughs> hello, you know, and she tells her, look, I won, leave me alone. Why are you here? She says, look, you won that round, but I'm letting you know this now. I don't stop and can't stop like Diddy. So I'm going to keep coming after you. And I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I got to do, but best believe this, this shop won't stay open long. And I'm really, really concerned about that because Miss Frederica, I know she don't play. So we move on and later on in the episode, we see Blanca and Lulu, they're sitting down and they're talking. And Lulu tells her, you know what, I really appreciate it. You caught me on my bad end. I was doing bad in my life and you came in, you you just saved me, even though we're different different houses. You stepped in and you said we got to help each other and save each other. And you inspired me so much that I've actually enrolled in junior college and I'm going to start accounting and I'm going to start taking those accounting classes. And of course, they're happy and she's just just amazed that she's changing her life around and she's decided to pursue something that she really, really wants. Ricky and Pray Tell, they're at the hospital and... Ricky is about to get his results for his HIV test and he's nervous and he's saying that, wow, I can't believe this. You know, Damien, usually, you know, the last time when we get tested, he would be here holding my hand. And now he's not here and I just can't believe I'm in this situation. And Pray Tell's basically just like, this is what you have to do. In, in the life that we live, you have to continuously take care of yourself and get tested. You know, you said that you didn't sleep you know, with the guy on the road. And, you know, if you didn't, you don't have anything to worry about per se, but we need to get this testing done. So Ricky talks to the doctor and unfortunately he finds out he has HIV and he goes into this panic and he just can't believe what he's hearing. He tells Pray Tell and of course Pray Tell is distraught as well. And, you know, Ricky says, I'm going to die, and, and I can't believe this. And Pray Tell says, hang in there. It's okay. And, you know, we're going to be here. We're going to get through this. The last scene of the episode, Angel shows up with Poppy to her BB photo shoot mess to the up she is gone she looks a hot mess and poppy is pretty much dragging her into the set and miss Ford, she sees her walk in and just shakes her head and can't believe yeah she can't believe it she says you are two hours late and she sees that she's just hide or on something and she pulls what i like about mrs ford's character the fact that she took the time to do this she pulls angel to the side and she says look i don't know what you did last night you don't have to tell me the specifics but you did what you did the day before your big break the day before this big photo shoot she said look don't think you're fooling anybody because I've been in this business longer than you've been alive. So I know what's going on, sweetie. I know that you're playing this game and you have this bright light. You have this opportunity to be great and you are dimming yourself. She said, I've seen other people with that same bright light and their downfall was them dimming their own light. And I thought, wow, that's got to be, it's no telling how many people she's seen in her career being Miss Ford, dwindle their own career and kill their own career. And she said, look, don't do this. Don't dim your own light. Get your stuff together. We got the hair and makeup people here. We got the people with the outfits, lighting, pretty much telling her, look, get it together. This is it. This is the moment where you be great and you be that wonderful light for other girls or you dim your own light and it's downhill from there. So she walks away and Angel, she's sitting at the table and she has her head down and she has this look like, oh girl, let's pull it together. And somebody walks behind her and says, well, hello, Angel, you know, are you ready to get started? And he gives her a very deceiving look and it is the photographer that knows her secret. He 
is the photographer that made her take off her clothes and took pictures of Angel and wanted to use them as blackmail. So he is the photographer that's there to take her photos and she just sees just complete, like she looks like a deer in headlights, like, oh my God. And that was her biggest fear that her secret would get out. So with the next episode, I'm really excited, you guys. I'm really uh, upset about Angel and Poppy that they're using drugs and man, oh man. And even though, a side note, even though Lulu got better and showed that she was on her, 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 on her toes, she was using drugs. And, you know, hey, she might have been sober that day, but she may have relapsed and go back. I wish her the best, but I don't have a good feeling about that character. Let me know what you think of this episode of Pose. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Comment and also follow me on Instagram. Same profile name, officialbun underscore E. See you next time.